In Creole View, you can create annotations. The first thing I recommend that you do before starting your different annotations is that you position your model on the screen the way that you want it to be, and then don't zoom in or rotate because that will affect the appearance and position and display of those 3D annotations. So I will go to my orientation dropdown. I will choose my ISO 1 view that I want to use. That's how I want the annotations to appear on it. Now I will click on the markup tab. You can see that we have six different icons in the annotations group. One is grayed out, but I'll show you how to add stamps later. The first one that I'm going to create is a shape. And when you go to the shape dropdown, you have rectangles and ellipses and a polygon, and they can either be filled in or they can be empty. I'm going to use a filled in, let's use the ellipse, and then I'm going to click on the screen where I want to start it. And then we have our different drag handles so that you can reposition it as you want it to be. And then when you're happy, you can left click on the background. And there we have the shape on the screen. For the next one, I will create a note with a leader. You can see that we have two different kinds of notes, one with leaders, one without. And I will click on notes with leader. And then I'm going to click where I want the annotation to start and then position it where I want it to be. And then I can fill in the text and I'll put in part marking. So that is my text. Here you have the ability to insert attributes. There is the option for expanded text. You also have a format tab where you can change stuff like the size of it and also the background shape and color. And we have our references and this is the part that it is connected to. I will click the OK button. If you ever want to get back to that, just double click on it and it will open up the note properties dialog box. Let me cancel out of here. For the next one that I'll create, let's create a note without the leader. So I'll click on the note command and then I'll position it where I want it to be. And then for the text, I'll just put in ITAR in here and then click the OK button. So there we have our second note created. There's an option for creating a freehand note. So for example, maybe you want to just call out some area where you want something to be done. Hey, just left click and then drag it in order to create your freehand shape. Next one, let's create a geometric tolerance. So I will click on it and then pick where I want it to appear on the screen. The GTAL properties dialog box comes up. Let's click in the symbol location. And there you can choose which kind of characteristic that you want to use. Let's use a positional tolerance and then we can type in our value. I'll type in 0 0.005. And if you click in the little cell to the right of it, you have your different modifiers. So for example, I could use max material condition and then you could specify a second tolerance if you wanted to. I'm just going to do one of them. For our datum, let me choose A for the first one. And also you have another box here where you can choose to modify it. And then let's put in our B and then our C in here. And that looks good. There's also a format tab for this one where you can change the size and the color and the background color. And I like all of this. Let's click the OK button. And there we have our geometric tolerance. I will click on the background of the screen. So now let's throw in a leader line. If I go to the drop down list, you can create either a simple leader line with or without an arrow, or you can have multiple different branches. Let's choose to do a leader with the head and tail. And then I'm going to pick where I want the leader to start and then drag it up and have it sort of going to my geometric tolerance. Let me left click on the screen in order to deselect it. You can see how it is set up. You can double click on the leader line to bring up the properties dialog box. And I can say, hey, you know what? I want this to be black instead. Then click the OK button. And I don't want to have a tail, so I can go to the drop down list and change that one. Now let's click the OK button and then deselect. And I have my leader set up the way that I want it to be. Now, let me show you some of the different defaults for your properties for these different annotations. 
If I go to the file drop down menu and then options, here I can go to the defaults. And in here we have our different kinds of annotations. And if you click on them, you can see what you can configure for how they appear. And then we have our text options, line style options. So for example, I can say, hey, you know what? I never want to have that dot on the tail. And then here are the different options for the shapes where you can change what color they appear in by default. Now, if you take a look in the interface, you can see that the stamp button is grayed out. If you go back to the global options, oops, let's say choose that. Yes, we want to apply these settings. I like that little warning there. Uh, if you go back to the global options underneath annotations, here we have the choice for measurements, whether they are going to be discarded or retained by default when you close the little dialog box for create measurements or asking you what to do. But what we want here is the stamps option. Right now, there are no stamps set up to use, so I can click on the add button and it's going to one of my file folders. If you take a look at the type dropdown list, you have basically all your different kinds of images that you can use like PNGs and JPEGs and so forth. Let me choose this symbol from the folder and choose the open button. Hey, let's put a nice little radiation symbol into our Creo view. I'll click the OK button here. Now you'll notice that stamps are available to be selected and I just have the one. So let's click on it and then place it where we want it to appear. You have a bunch of different drag handles where you can grab it. And if you want to, you can resize it to how big you want it to appear in your view. And when you're happy, hey, just deselect it. So now I've got my nice little radiation warning. So now that I've put all these different annotations in here, I can share them with other people. And the way that you do that is by going to the file drop down menu. And then we can save our annotation set. I'm going to use the save annotation set as in order to give it a new name and not overwrite what was the previous active annotation set and for this name i'm just going to call it notes and i can adjust who i want listed as the author let me put in my name there and then click the ok button and now this annotation set has been saved if you go to the annotation sets tab, here you can see all of the different ones that I have for this particular model. And so note, this is the one that I just created. You can right click in here and choose to switch to the tree view. And so in the tree view, you can also create folders. Now, if I select the active one, I can't create a folder for it. Let me switch over to one of my other ones, the completely empty one. Now I can go to notes and create a folder and then you can select the folder, right click and choose rename. I'll call this my design reviews and hit the enter key in order to complete it. And so that way I have a folder that I can use to organize my various different annotation sets that I have in the model. Let's double click on the notes annotation set in order to restore it. So that's how you can create your different annotation sets in Creo View.